All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jack Moody, and today I'll be doing a discussion on sparse identification for nonlinear dynamics. Uh, it's an algorithm otherwise known as SIMDI. Uh, a quick disclaimer, uh, nothing that I talk about here is new work. This presentation is designed to be just a teaching tool. Proper citation and credit is given throughout. Um, please don't take anything that I, that I do here as brand new work. This is just a opportunity for me to talk about Cindy and what an amazing algorithm it is and why I think it's great to be used on nonlinear dynamical systems. Looking at our agenda, um, starting off with our bottom line up front, uh, an introduction uh, to the paper, uh, an introduction on what a dynamical system is and why they're so important, uh, a, a look at Cindy, the motivation behind it, the how it actually works, and then going through some canonical examples, and then finally conclusions and citations. So our bottom line up front uh, is that Cindy is a regression framework for the discovery of parsimonious dynamic models and governing equations from time series data. Uh, another way of saying that uh, is it uses regression on raw data to find underlying equations that govern that actual data when that governing equation might not exist yet, which is an incredibly powerful tool. So who actually wrote this paper? Where did it come from? So on and so forth. Uh, the paper was called, uh, is called, <laughs> uh, Discovering Governing Equations from Data by Sparse Identification of Nonlinear Dynamical Systems. It was written by Dr. Steve Brunton, Joshua Proctor, and Nathan Kutz, uh, all from the University of Washington. Um, Kutz and Proctor are from the Applied Math Department, and Dr. Brunton is from the uh, Mechanical Engineering Department. It was originally published in 2016 in PNAS. However, since then, uh, they have come out with many, many, many more papers, not only about uh, Cindy specifically, they've done things with neural networks, I believe also with deep learning, um, parallel computing, it, it, it's, they've done a lot of amazing work. Uh, I'll be linking their GitHub page uh, and their, their notes in not only this GitHub repo, but also in the YouTube channel. Uh, please check out their work. It's, it's, they've done some really amazing work and, and they deserve uh, to have their algorithms used more. Um, so this really is an algorithm to help make better math models. And to make better math models, you kind of have to understand the math you're working with. So to take a step back before talking and diving into Cindy, let's actually describe what a dynamical system is for those that, that might not know. Uh, a dynamical system is a system of equations that describe physical, biological, or other phenomena uh, that evolve over time. And if we have access to the governing differential equations behind those dynamical systems, there are many different things that you can do with that data. Uh, for example, you can actually evolve that system over time to create new models and understand how it will evolve. Uh, you can do things like predicting Lyapunov exponents or trying to do uncertainty quantification. Uh, once you have the underlying governing equations, there's many, many things that you can do with it that are helpful in the real world. Um, and here we can see on the bottom of the screen just a, an introduction to what a dynamical system might look like. You'll have some, some system uh, that's uh, derivative uh, and it'll, it'll be evolving over time. You'll classify that as an f of x. Uh, and then you'll have some discrete time step that will evolve that system over time and it'll be a continuous update. Uh, sorry, a, a discrete time update. So why are dynamical systems so important? Why, why should we worry about them? Uh, dynamical systems uh, occur everywhere uh, in both nature and our universe. You can see them from something as simple as stirring your coffee in the morning uh, to when you step outside in the cold and, and the, when you breathe out, your air, the air that you breathe out will uh, like smoke up uh, and it'll frost and it'll kind of uh, go upwards and it'll spiral in the air. That's a dynamical system uh, to even things like the guidance of satellites. Uh, to the dynamics of Earth's climate and, and trying to work with climate science, uh, to the electrical activity in the brain. Uh, and specifically with the, with the last two examples, the, the turbulence and uh, the electrical uh, activity that goes on in the brain, those are relatively new areas of science that don't have strict governing equations yet. Uh, there are many areas in physics and mathematics that are dynamical, but they have great underlying equations, things like the, the double pendulum, for example. Um, but in these new areas of science, there's so much raw data being collected 
but it's really hard to work with it sometimes and find underlying models so you can predict things in the future consistently because there are not exact governing equations yet to describe that data. So that's our problem. We have all this data, but we don't have equations yet to actually describe that data and how it evolves. The solution uh, is actually using that data and working your way backwards to discover the governing equations. And that's exactly what Dr. Brunton, uh, Dr. Proctor, and Dr. Kutz did uh, with the discovery of Cindy. So I'm gonna apologize up front. This is a, a very math introduction to, to Cindy. This is a very mathematician way of looking at this. Uh, so please just, just bear with me here while, while I read this. Um, suppose we have a, a, a set of measurements, x of t, that are in the set of r numbers of n, uh, from r to the n, from some physical system at various points in time t. Cindy will seek to represent the time evolution x of t in terms of a nonlinear function f, where d of x of t of dt is equal to f of x of t. This equation constitutes a dynamical system of the measurements of x of t. Thus, the vector x of t, which would be a column vector, uh, gives the state of the physical system at time t, a specific instance of time t. This function, f of x of t, will constrain how the system will evolve in time. So the key idea behind Cindy is that the function of f is often sparse in the space of an appropriate set of basis functions. So essentially, you have your set of equations, uh, all of your x of t's uh, on once on the left-hand side, on, I'm sorry, your, your f of x of t's on the left-hand side, but then on the right-hand side, there will only be so many things uh, that those individual systems of equations could be, those individual equations could be equal to. So we can see this example on the screen as a, as a great introduction of that. That system uh, is sparse with respect to the set of polynomials of two variables in the sense that if you were to write an expansion out of the component functions of f in this basis, uh, so for example, you would do f1, uh, f sub one of x is equal to some a i sub j, uh, x sub one to the i th, a uh, x sub two to the j, th, sum all those i th and j zero to infinity. Uh, there will only be a small number of coefficients for a sub i sub j that would be non-zero. So Cindy can exploit that uh, by using sparse regression to find a linear combination of basis functions that best capture the dynamic behavior of the physical system. So that's a very abstract introduction to Cindy. So let's actually think about how it actually works. Here on the screen, we can see the Lorentz system. Uh, the Lorentz system is a great toy model that's used for atmospheric convection, and it's a very common first example uh, in nonlinear dynamical systems and chaos theory. Um, if we take a look at the three equations that govern the dynamical system, we have x dot, y dot, and z dot, and we can break them down one by one. First, you should know uh, that sigma, rho, and beta uh, are constants. And with, uh, from there, we can kind of discount those because those are going to be set. Uh, and we can take a deeper look at the uh, x dot, y dot, and z dot and see its active components. So if we take a look first at x dot, you can see that the only active terms we have to worry about are y and x. For y dot, we have a linear term in x, a nonlinear term in x, z, and a linear term in y. Finally, for z dot, we have a linear term in z and a nonlinear term in x, y. Now, with this in mind, the right-hand side of this system of equations is relatively simple. And we will have a specific form with only a few possibilities for what the right side could look like. So what happens next is we feed the algorithm, we feed Cindy some experimental data, and it's collected and put into vectors x, y, and z. Uh, and those will go down in time. So now we can move from uh, kind of where that one is, where we, we see the graph of Lorentz system, the, the nice butterfly wings that are very um, iconic of the uh, Lorentz system. We can move into this matrix uh, X dot, uh, capital X dot, with the blue, red, and green columns. So what happens, um, the data is collected and it's put into vectors X, Y, and Z that go down in time. And keep in mind that we also have x dot, y dot, and z dot as vectors right now, uh, but that derivative case is not necessarily always needed. 
Uh, and please keep in mind that the right-hand side of the system is sparse in time of these forms these equations can take on. So we can move on from the vector x, y, and z and construct vectors of all the possible polynomial nonlinearities uh, up to order five. Uh, and that's what that theta x matrix is. And if we take a look at and we kind of break down that matrix a little bit, we'll see that it gives us a column of ones, column of x's, y's, z's, x squared, y squared, so on and so forth, and all of the nonlinear combinations. So x, y, x, z, y, z, so on and so forth, all the way up to x to the fifth, y to the fifth, z to the fifth. So we've gone through and we've broken out all of those uh, possible combinations that, that, um, that the regression could possibly need to fit this data to. So a regression will be performed to find what linear combination of these nonlinearity terms uh, will best represent x dot, y dot, and z dot. Uh, this regression is set up by first collecting measurements in time and doing a sparse regression to find the linear combination of the fewest columns of this library theta of x that are needed to describe x dot. So now we're moving from that nice middle section down to the more expanded out, uh, the purple, orangey, and green uh, column matrices that, that we see down below, um, column vectors, I mean. And we can see first for x dot, when it's moving downwards in time, the regression is able to identify that uh, x dot is only dependent on x and y. Uh, now moving over to y dot, uh, the regression is able to notice uh, that it only needs terms in x, y, x, z. And finally, for z dot, it only needs terms in z and x, y. And it doesn't need any additional entries from the nonlinear library for any of those uh, x dot, y dot, or z dot terms. So this will happen. Uh, and then moving over to the top right hand side, it will output the sparse coefficients of the dynamics that are necessary to evolve the system over time, and it will find the governing uh, coefficients that are needed. Uh, and it will look, it will see which of the components in the space are active, and then we can see that by graphing out uh, those actual dynamics over time, those outputs over time, moving to where that number three is, uh, it gives us a very, very good match of what the original system is. Uh, and <laughs> It's pretty much uh, identical, uh, and it captures exactly the simulated data that we needed, and it captures the dynamics of this nonlinear dynamical system, uh, also known as, as, as an attractor for the specific case. Uh, so it's a really great fit, and it does exactly what we wanted to do, which is awesome. Now, uh, looking, uh, cutting over, there's a Jupyter notebook that was created uh, that I was able to reproduce uh, in PyCindy. Uh, the original paper, uh, did not use Python, but it was rewritten in Python, and that's the main uh, programming language that I use. So I decided to do all the simulations and stuff that I needed in Python. Um, quick disclaimer again, none of this work is mine. I properly cited so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, let, let's actually dive into some nice examples of Cindy so we can start to dig our teeth into it and figure out what are, what are some nice examples and, and start to understand why the algorithm is so robust and, and why it's so important. So first, we will download, or I'm sorry, we will import uh, all the necessary normal libraries that you'll need. Uh, for example, matplotlib, numpy, scipy, so on and so forth. And then, of course, PyCindy, uh, which is the Python library that they made Cindy for with Python. Uh, now we'll go through and look at some nice uh, illustrative examples to show the, the importance of Cindy. Uh, the first example that we'll look at here is a linear two-dimensional damped harmonic oscillator. Uh, hopefully, we all remember positively our time back in differential equations looking at harmonic oscillators. Uh, the first thing we have to do is generate the training data. The function that we're going to want Cindy to discover uh, is going to be x dot uh, is equal to minus 0.1x uh, plus 2y, and y dot uh, is equal to minus 2x minus 0.01y. Um, so I'm going to go through and feed it that, that uh, function give it its uh, time step, so on and so forth, train that data. And now that we have the raw data, we're going to want Cindy uh, to fit that training data uh, and find uh, the governing equation from that raw data. So next we fit it. Uh, we give it its polynomial order uh, threshold for developing the theta matrix. We actually run the model, we do the fit, 
and we find that Cindy does an amazing job. Uh, it finds exactly what we wanted. Uh, the learn model can be used to evolve initial conditions forward in time, which is a great um, key aspect in case you only have um, a set amount of raw data and you want to see what would happen if you continued forward propagating that model over time. So we see that it's incredibly uh, good at finding the governing equation, but let's see how it actually models up if we try to plot these trajectories. So next, uh, we will plot the Cindy uh, projected, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the predicted trajectories uh, against those of the actual governing equation that we fed it, uh, sorry, that, that we wanted it to, to find. And we go through and we see that if we simulate the results, uh, it does an amazing, amazing match. Uh, it's able to see, uh, if you go through and you look at this plot here, you can see that the model uh, is these uh, this dashed black line. Uh, our Y is this kind of purplish uh, lavender line, and then red uh, is, is our X. Uh, and you can see it, it matches it very well. And then plotting out X1 versus X2, uh, again, Cindy does an amazing job uh, of actually matching uh, what we wanted to. Next, moving on to a little bit of a more complicated example. Uh, we'll look to see if Cindy can identify uh, a two-dimensional damped harmonic oscillator uh, that's nonlinear. So it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, and we will see, uh, sorry, this governing equation we wanted to find uh, is almost identical to the previous one uh, in terms of its coefficients. But this time, the actual uh, x and y dependencies are cubic uh, instead of linear. So again, we go through, find and generate the data, fit the model, and boom, it, it's able to, to match it again to an incredibly strong degree. Next, we plot it to, to double check, and it does a, an awesome job. Uh, and just a quick model, uh, a quick extra example to, to kind of go back to the first example that we did uh, with the Lorentz equation. Uh, this is actually going to be adding some noise this time around. Uh, so the Lorentz system serves uh, as a great uh, example for nonlinear uh, ordinary differential equations who exhibit some chaotic behaviors uh, for a strange attractor evolving on a strange attractor. Uh, here we can see the coefficients. Uh, sigma is equal to 10, rho equal to 28, beta is equal to uh, 8 thirds, which is a very canonical way of, of setting those coefficients. Um, and we're going to start with an initial condition in your position for this attractor at minus 8, 8, and 27. Again, same as normal, we generate the training data. But in this example, both the states of x and its derivatives, x dot, um, of the Lorentz system are going to be measures and with the increasing level of noise that are added to the derivatives. Uh, so the added level of noise would be point, I believe it is, yes, 0 0.01 and a 1. So we go through, fit the models, simulate the noise. And now we'll actually go through and plot. And we can see that this is the full simulation. This is the identified system with the noise uh, at 0.01 and then 1. As we can see here, it is still, Cindy is doing an incredible job of being able to repro reproduce the system, uh, even with the additional noise. Uh, so it's an incredibly strong algorithm. All right, so now we've gone through and done our examples. Uh, in conclusion, uh, Cindy is an incredibly strong algorithm uh, using regression techniques uh, that has helped many scientists discover parsimonious governing equations from their experimental data. Uh, here are the necessary citations. Uh, thank you so much uh, for listening. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them. Uh, either in the comment section or wherever you're reviewing this video. Uh, and please go visit the GitHub repo too for additional resources. Uh, thank you so much.